let's talk about analog to digital conversion. When it comes to ADCs, we have a variety of options. We can integrate it into our MCUs. We can have a standalone solution. But have you considered the benefits of each approach when you should integrate your ADC or when a standalone option is a better bet? Well, I'm glad you came to Chalk Talk because we're talking about all of this and more. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Many designs today require some form of analog to digital conversion, but how you implement your ADC into your design can make a big difference when it comes to accuracy and precision. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Iman Chalabi from Microchip and I investigate the benefits of both integrated ADC solutions and standalone ADCs. We discuss the roles that internal switching noise, process technology, and design complexity play when choosing the right ADC solution for your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic for Microchip. Hi, Iman. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Amelia. So, Iman, we're talking about the differences between integrated ADCs and standalone ADCs today, right? That is correct. When it comes to the analog to digital converters, we have noticed uh, a lot of our customers find it challenging to decide whether or not if they want to design a standalone ADC or discrete ADC into their application. Now, we know that most of microcontrollers nowadays come with a built-in on-chip integrated ADC, which are probably suitable for a wide range of application and systems. However, if your system or application requires higher accuracy or precision, then designer may opt to use an ADC with a better accuracy and precision. So it really boils down to the differences between accuracy and precision. Okay, so let's talk about those differences. What do you see are the main differences between accuracy and precision? That's a really good question, Emilia. Before we dive into this topic, it is really important for us to define uh, those two terms, accuracy and precision, especially in the context of analog to digital converters, because these two terms are often used uh, very interchangeably in industry, so it is really important for us to define them before we dive into this discussion. Analog to digital converter, as you know, is a device that converts analog signal into the digital signals. And accuracy of analog digital converter is basically the ability of the measurement of that ADC to match the actual value that it is trying to measure. That is the accuracy of ADC. However, the precision of ADC is the ability of measurements to be consistently reproduced. And basically what we are talking about is repeatability of the measurements. For example, if you are looking at the four different systems that we are representing here, we do have on the most left side, we do have a target that is representing a system that is both highly accurate and highly precise. And as you can see in this uh, shooting range example, all of our bullets or arrows are in a bullseye. However, a system could have high precision, but have low accuracy. In this case, you are seeing a second system from the left. Uh, as you can see, we do see a tight, repeatable grouping. However, this represents a system with a low accuracy, as you can see, because the grouping is not in center anymore. And then we do have a high accuracy, low precision. As you can see, we do have a lot of grouping around the bullseye, but we don't see a lot of repeatability. And at the end, we do have a system that is neither accurate nor precise. This kind of shows a difference between accuracy and precision. Now, as I mentioned, this definition is really important because depending on the level of performance that is kind of required by your system, you are going to decide whether to choose standalone or integrated ADC. And as you can see in this slide, it really boils down to performance versus a price discussion. And by performance, we are talking about how much precision or accuracy is needed. In the context of ADC, so it is really important to be able to differentiate between these two phrases that is used in industry. 
Now, let's dig more and talk about some advantages of a standalone ADC and some advantage of integrated ADC and possibly talk about top six consideration when we are trying to decide between a standalone ADC and integrated ADC. Just a small disclaimer before diving in. When I talk about advantages of a standalone ADC, it doesn't mean all the standalone ADCs have these advantages over every single discrete ADC. So there are a lot of case by case unique situations. And this discussion kind of meant to be a guideline for designers and the question they need to ask themselves before they decide an option they want to implement into their design. Okay, so let's talk specifically about standalone ADCs. Iman, what kind of advantages and benefits do they bring to the table? Thank you very much. Let's start with advantages of a standalone ADC, and let's start with a process technology advantage. Uh, in an integrated ADC, since microcontroller is basically the main component of that system, and ADC is just integrated as a peripheral to the microcontroller. Usually, a smaller MCU-friendly process is used to actually manufacture those uh, integrated ADC. And uh, the reason for that is in smaller process technology, such as 28 nanometer process or even smaller than that, is very desirable in designing MCUs because they offer a good digital density and high speed transistors because of the small nature of the process, which is very ideal for microcontroller itself. However, the more you shrink the process, the more you're limiting the size of components, especially we are talking about the size of analog components available in that process technology. And the smaller components means you are going to observe uh, an increase in a thermal noise, leakage, and nonlinearity because smaller processes are more prone to changes from environment. You know, we are talking about a lack of control in a smaller process that kind of lead to the manufacturing process variation over time. Like if there is a temperature variation in uh, environments, your ADC performance is going to drift based on it, that temperature change. Therefore, your ADC is going to be less accurate in a sense that its performance is going to change over time and it's going to drift over time. Another challenge with a smaller process geometry is 1F noise. 1F noise is a common evil in analog world that usually designers want to filter out and is a low frequency noise for which a noise power is inversely proportional to its frequency. And I do have a plot here at the bottom right corner. We are looking at the plot that's showing one of noise. As you can see, the one of noise is present at the lower frequency. And at a higher frequency, white noise starts to kind of dominate the overall noise of a system at a point called corner frequency. A smaller geometry process will shift the corner frequency to the right. And uh, as you can see in this plot by right, I'm talking about higher frequencies. This will make use of digital filtering techniques such as averaging and oversampling more challenging because now you're dealing for with higher frequency noises. Now you have to set up a higher frequency filters now that the quantum frequency has moved right and to the higher domain. However, in a standalone ADC, a larger and more analog friendly process technology, usually in 90 nanometer technology or 180 nanometer technology is used. And the advantage of that technology is because it is bigger, it offers a larger will match optimized components for analog functionality. As a result of that, you will see more immunity to the leakage noise to nonlinearity and matching issues. Therefore, you end up with a more ruggedness toward the environmental changes, such as temperature change, humidity change, there is vibration, and you basically end up with a more robust ADC design. 
Another thing to consider when designing an analog functionality such as analog to digital converter into your system is to yet yeah, you as a designer need to find out overall error to tolerance and switching no noise tolerance of your system. The reason this is really important is in an MCU with an integrated on-chip ADC, you might easily be able to use that ADC because it's already integrated inside an MCU and convert your analog signal because of convenience of uh, built-in ADC. However, we know that a microcontroller, when it is active, acts like a constant switching element that is constantly switching, converting ones and zeros. Therefore, a fast switching MCU will introduce switching noises into integrated ADC that is built right next to it. And that could obviously have negative effect on the ADC performance. And again, by performance, we are referring to precision and accuracy of the ADC. Why is doing that? Because, you know, it is introducing switching noises and those will show up in your system as a vibration and inaccuracy. In the past, a lot of our designer customers choose to use clock synchronization and management techniques to minimize the effect of these switching uh, noises. But interaction of other peripherals with ADC still impacts it, and you still cannot 100% minimize these switching effects with these design techniques. On the other hand, in the case of a standalone ADC, you don't have an MCU right next to it, and there is no active peripherals on it and the ADC itself. So you just have an ADC isolated from outside world, and it's not going to be affected by the outside world. In addition to the noise, temperature also has a huge influence on an ADC accuracy. And again, going back to what I mentioned about noise, I can say exact same thing about temperature as well. An active MCU acts like a variable heat source, constantly going from hot to cold, hot obviously when it is high speed and is doing the work in the high speed active power, and going to cold in the case of standby and sleep and hibernation. And this hot cold fluctuation will cause again significant offset and gain drift into the ADC sitting next to an MCU. And again, in a perfect world to get a predictable performance in this environment, a lot of designers use temperature compensation techniques, but we have noticed that adding temperature compensation circuitries to actually offset these negative effects of a temperature fluctuation will add to the size and cost a luxury that integrated ADCs cannot really afford. On the other hand, in the case of standalone ADC, again, there is no time varying temperature source such as MCU sitting next to it. So it is again isolated from outside world and you can expect a more stable and predictable performance out of a standalone ADC. One thing that needs to be considered when we are talking about standalone and integrated differences is a test capability and data sheet of each of these options. What you should remember that MCUs are mainly tested on digital testing platforms. Why? Because there are digital components and if a customer really trying to buy MCU, they are trying to pay for its digital performances. These devices are mainly tested on digital test platforms with limited analog testing capability. And that is why when you look at the specification of an integrated ADC in an MCU datasheet, they are usually either guaranteed by design or guaranteed through characterization only. And you're not really going to get guaranteed and tested results for some of the parameters because they are not tested in digital platforms. And in a lot of cases, you are not getting a certain analog specification that might be important to your design. For example, drift performance. Uh, and again, the reason for that is an MCU datasheet mainly is going to be focused on an MCU and not an integrated ADC inside of it. An integrated ADC doesn't usually specify the effect of temperature, as I mentioned. And there is no production screen of ADC performance and there is no yield loss to the ADC performance anomalies. On the other hand, 
all of these informations are present in a data sheet for a discrete, and in a present in a data sheet in a standalone ADC. So that kind of wraps up all the advantages of uh, the standalone ADC. Okay, so now that we've covered standalone ADCs, what about integrated ADCs? What kind of benefits are you seeing here, Amon? We kind of briefly touched on the advantages of integrated ADC as we were going through standalone ADC advantages. But obviously, as you probably figured out so far, the overall complexity of incorporating an integrated ADC in your system is going to be a lot less. Since there won't be any need for development of a software to interface your external ADC with your MCU. Why? Because it's already built in inside the MCU. Easily, customer can go and pick it up and use it. Nor will be a need to account for placement and routing of analog to digital signals from the microcontroller to ADC. Again, it's because it already comes inside the MCU, inside a single package. All you need is pick a few pins from an MCU and use it. It is a lot easier to design integrated ADCs. And if your customer design application doesn't require the robust, accurate, precise results that could be actually achieved from a standalone ADC, if they don't require that, then they will probably lean towards designing in an integrated ADC. In addition to that, the integration of ADC with a microcontroller again, means the overall board footprint will also be smaller since the ADC is also included inside the MCU. Therefore, an integrated ADC will have a footprint that will require a lot less space. Therefore, if you're dealing with a system applications that are really space conscious, you know, for example, it's a portable device application, you need to shrink as much as possible the PCB design, the board design, Therefore, in those kind of cases, integrated ADC would be a great choice. Lastly, as we mentioned earlier, standalone ADCs are tested on analog testing platforms using very expensive precision analog equipments. Unlike digital testing platforms, analog testing platforms actually use a lot of more complicated testing routines and they tend to have a lot of variation between different load boards, analog signal generators, and analog measurement systems. And not only that, a lot of standalone ADCs, temperature composition techniques used for analog circuits and all of those kind of require a different temperature trim to be applied at the final test to guarantee certain temperature coefficients that is promised in a data sheet. So all of these factors would greatly increase the test cost and final price of a standalone ADC. The price of a microcontroller with an integrated ADC because of all of these reasons, it's going to definitely be lower than a combined price of a microcontroller and separate ADCs. Therefore, an integrated ADC solution can offer a lot less expensive design. Therefore, for our application systems that are very cost conscious, usually the designers tend to gravitate toward integrated ADCs. So, Imant, what does microchip have in this realm? Microchip's main bread and butter is microcontrollers. Obviously, we have hundreds of different kinds of microcontroller and with different flavors. We have a 32-bit microcontroller, 16-bit microcontroller, 8-bit microcontrollers. We do have literally hundreds of microcontrollers that do come with built-in ADCs and analog built-in analog to digital converters, and usually all of our microcontrollers and microchip usually have between one to up to five internal ADCs inside them that could be utilized by different customers for their application. And we also are known for analog portfolio as well. In microchip right now, we do have currently 82 different flavors of standalone ADCs going from a few kilosampler per second up to one megasample per second of speed. And we do have ADCs from just a few bits of resolution up to 24 bits of resolution. And we do offer Delta Sigma, Pipeline, and SAR architectures with the standalone ADCs. 
Therefore, Microchip is really capable of providing both kind of a solution depending on the customer need. For microcontrollers, you can definitely check out our parametric tables. And for microchip standalone data converter solution, definitely make sure to check our design center with this link and this page. And also make sure to check out our trailing tool, which provides an overview of all our analog products. Excellent. Well, Iman, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much, Emilia. It was a pleasure to be here. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Microchip. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.